studying a major reaction of alkanes that is in more advancement in AS level. It's called free radical substitution. In O levels, it was just labeled as substitution. And first we'll be doing a review what it was all about in O levels. Now you can write this what I'm dictating is substitution means replacing something. So as in a substitution reaction, the alkanes reacts with halogens. Halogens are group 7 elements in the presence of sunlight or UV rays because the reaction is photochemical reaction. We will be telling you in AS level that why this reaction requires sunlight. Now what happens in this reaction is whatever alkane you are going to use for example methane which has 4 hydrogens then in 4 different steps each of these hydrogens gets replaced by the halogen. If you use ethane which has 6 hydrogens then the reaction will take place in 6 different steps in which the hydrogens will get replaced by the halogen. Let's for example review chlorination of methane. So in O levels you have already studied chlorination of methane. In this reaction if you react methane with chlorine in the presence of sunlight then you need to provide excess chlorine so that all the hydrogens gets replaced one step at a time. Out of these four hydrogens one of them get replaced by chlorine and that hydrogen then binds with the other chlorine atom to form HCl. In the next step this compound known as monochloromethane reacts with chlorine that means you should have excess chlorine because if you get give limited chlorine and all the chlorine get used up in the first step you will only end up getting monochloromethane and the reaction will not proceed to the second step. So if you have excess chlorine it will proceed to the second step and will result in substitution of another hydrogen atom. For example it will produce CH2, Cl2 this is called dichloromethane. Now what has happened over here is that one of the chlorine has substituted one of these hydrogens to form dichloromethane and the other remaining chlorine bonds with that substituted hydrogen to give HCl. If you provide more chlorine then this dichloromethane will react with chlorine in the same manner and another hydrogen will be replaced forming trichloromethane. Then this trichloromethane reacts with chlorine to produce tetrachloromethane and HCl. Overall, in order to substitute all these four hydrogens, you need to provide 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 moles of chlorine. But if you provide only 3 moles, you will end up over on this step, step number 3. If you provide only 1 mole, you cannot go beyond step number 1. So to produce all these 4 different halogen containing alkanes, these are generally known as a halogen containing alkanes or you can call them alkyl halides, you need to provide excess chlorine, 4 moles or more. Now in AS level, we would like you to know that how this reaction proceeds, this is called mechanism. So the A level syllabus mainly focuses on the mechanism of this reaction will be emphasizing the importance of sunlight that why this reaction do not start without the sunlight what's the role of the sunlight we will be explaining that why this reaction takes place in steps and one thing which you don't know is that these are not the only products of a substitution reaction uh, substitution reaction is a very complicated reaction and it gives multiple products shortly you will look at uh, into the details that how these reactions takes place stepwise and how there are more products possible. Now let's begin with studying the mechanism of this reaction. Now what is a mechanism? Mechanism highlights that how things work 
between the atoms and the molecules, their collisions that which atom is colliding with which molecule or atom, what type of reactions are taking place, all the steps involved that leads to the overall reaction. So mechanism is a breakup or a detail of the overall equation. So the mechanism for substitution reaction involves three different uh, parts. The first one is called initiation step. As the name emphasizes, initiation means starting. And over here, the role of sunlight is being highlighted. Now what does sunlight do is that the chlorine molecule requires a bond energy of around 244 kilojoules per mole. If you go to the data booklet, you can look at the bond energy required to break this covalent bond. Now sunlight provides that bond energy to break this bond. Now when a covalent bond breaks, there are two types of bond breaking. One is called homolytic fission. Homo means same. Fission from your physics means splitting something. Now you are breaking a covalent bond which is non-polar or between same elements. It's called homolytic fission. So when you break this bond, the shared electrons, this electron goes back to its original atom and this electron goes back to its original atom. This is what is called homolytic fission. In a homolytic fission, a molecule breaks into its atoms. It will give you two chlorine atoms. This dot is the electron which was shared by this chlorine. It has been uh, transferred back to its valence shell and the cross electron belongs to the chlorine, other chlorine and has been uh, transferred to its valence shell. Now chlorine's electronic configuration ends up on 3p5. So this electron specifically is in 3p5 orbital which means This electron is actually this one, the 3pz orbital electron, which is termed as unpaired electron. Now recall from your covalent bonding that it's the unpaired electrons which takes part in chemical bonding. So in organic chemistry, any molecule or atom which has an unpaired electron, that unpaired electron is actually shown like this on its symbol. So if you see a dot on anything that represents an unpaired electron and such substances which have unpaired electrons are called free radicals. So what are free radicals? Free radicals are substances which could be an atom or a molecule which has an unpaired electron. Now this reaction is called free radical substitution because it, has, it is these free radical which takes this reaction forward. So let me just summarize the initiation step. In the initiation step, you should know that the role of sunlight is to break the covalent bond between the chlorine atoms in the chlorine molecule homolytically. So that the bond breaks and the molecule converts into chlorine atoms and these chlorine atoms are called free radicals because they have unpaired electrons. Now these free radicals will collide with each other. They can collide back with each other. Like these atoms can do again collide with each other and form the molecule. Or they can collide with the methane, this molecule. Because remember what you have mixed initially, you have mixed methane with chlorine. So from here, there are two types of collision possible. One between the chlorine atoms themselves, which results in the chlorine molecule again. So that means not all the molecules are gone because the moment the molecule breaks and forms an atom, those atoms then recombine to form the molecule again. So there are two things existing in your reaction flask. One is the chlorine molecule and one are chlorine atoms. 
Now the chlorine molecule Cl2 do not collide with CH4. It's the chlorine atoms which collides with CH4 and results in propagation step. That's the next step. So I'm going to rub this and I'm going to write the propagation step. The term propagate means to move forward, to go forward or something new. So that's the purpose over here. In a propagation step, we study the collisions between a free radical and a molecule. And we are only interested in the collisions which result in a new molecule or a new radical. Collisions which do not result in a new molecule or a new atom will not be discussed in this step. So now remember the particles you have in your reaction flask. One of the particle is chlorine molecule, another particle is methane molecule. The molecule do not collide with the molecule. Let me label them molecules. Cl2 do not collide with CH4 and now you have free radicals chlorine now chlorine free radical if collides with the chlorine molecule do not result in anything new that is why we will be discussing a collision between a CH4 molecule and a chlorine free radical so if a chlorine free radical collides with CH4 this takes away one of the hydrogens to form HCl and this CH4 becomes CH3 free radical. Now we have a new free radical in this reaction flask. If CH3 free radical collides with CH4 molecule, nothing new will happen because one of the hydrogen will go to CH3, it will become CH4, this one will become CH3, same as with chlorine and chlorine molecule. So now something new can only happen when this free radical collides with a chlorine molecule. So if CH3 free radical collides with a chlorine molecule, it can take one of its chlorine to form a new molecule CH3Cl known as monochloromethane and the free radical will be reformed. Now if you focus on this, these two steps, what has happened in the first step? The chlorine radical collided with the methane molecule. Methane molecule has a tetrahedral geometry. It has four hydrogens surrounding one centered carbon. So imagine a methane chlorine free radical moving towards a methane molecule. It can only collide with the hydrogen atoms. And after collision, the chlorine free radical will make a bond with the hydrogen atom and bond making is exothermic that will release energy and that energy is used to break the CH bond and that is why the chlorine atoms takes away one of the hydrogens from the CH4 molecule resulting in HCl. Now after giving its hydrogen to the chlorine atom the CH4 becomes CH3 free radical. Now this CH3 free radical in the next step reacts with the chlorine molecule. Now the chlorine molecule has only chlorine to offer. So when these two collide, one of the chlorine atom disconnects from the other one, the bond breaks between the chlorine molecule and that chlorine molecule then binds with the CH3 free radical to form CH3 Cl. The other chlorine atom in this molecule becomes chlorine free radical. Now if you try to add these two reactions together, this chlorine and this chlorine will be cancelled because they are same and this CH3 and this CH3 will be cancelled because they are same and you will end up getting CH4 reacting with chlorine to produce CH3Cl plus 
HCl. This is what you studied in your O levels. So in A levels, we are trying to explain that how a reaction between CH4 and Cl3 takes place in detail and why sunlight was important and why this reaction is being called free radical substitution. As you can see that these free radicals started this reaction and were reproduced in the end. Anything that is present at the start of the reaction and is reproduced in the end is called a catalyst. So this chlorine free radical is the catalyst and it is a homogeneous catalyst because it's in the same physical state as the reactants. Now anything which is being produced in the first step and then used up in the next step is called an intermediate. So the CH3 behaves as an intermediate. Now imagine if you have 100 CH4 molecules, after this one single step, one of them gets used up and converts into CH3Cl, 99 of them are still remaining. So you have a new molecule CH3Cl, only one of them exists in your reaction flask. Imagine this to be your reaction flask and still 99 are CH4. So the chlorine free radical will still collide with CH4 rather than colliding with CH3Cl because they are in larger quantity. But for with each collision, the number of CH4 molecules will decrease and the number of chloromethane molecules will start to increase. There will be a time, maybe they will decrease to 60 and they will become significant. Once the number of molecules of CH3Cl becomes significant, the collision of chlorine atom with CH4 becomes also possible between chlorine atom and CH3Cl. So let's imagine that instead chlorine colliding with CH4, what if it starts to collide with CH3Cl? Over here, this is our second possibility. If the chlorine atom, which because lives, it was reformed in the end, instead of colliding with CH4, collides with CH3Cl. Now the carbon is not surrounded by four hydrogens. It's been surrounded by three hydrogens and one chlorine. Now this chlorine atom can collide with either the three, one of the three hydrogens or it can collide with the chlorine atom. Imagine this chlorine atom colliding with this chlorine atom. That means it will take away the chlorine atom from the carbon. But that will not result in anything new because that will give you chlorine and that will form CH3 free radical. These are some things which already exist in your reaction flask. And the purpose of propagation step is to discuss the collisions which results in something new. That is why I'll not be discussing the possibility of chlorine atom colliding with the chlorine atom of monochloromethane rather than chlorine atom colliding with the hydrogen atom of monochloromethane. Now imagine chlorine atom colliding with hydrogen of monochloromethane means it will take away the hydrogen will result in HCl. Although HCl is something which exists in your reaction flask already and the reason I have not mentioned it in the list of the molecule is because it's not an organic compound, it does not have carbon. But we do get something new. Imagine this hydrogen being taken away by this chlorine what is left is CH from CH3, it becomes CH2 and Cl. You have a new free radical. Again, this is your intermediate. Why? Because this is being produced in the first step like this one. And just like this one, it will be used again in the next step. So it's kind of a sequence. The intermediate which is being produced in the first step is the reactant of your second step. So that's what we have done over here. The intermediate of your first step is the reactant of your second step and that has to collide with the chlorine molecule. Now what will happen, this chlorine molecule only has to offer chlorine atoms. So when this free radical collides with chlorine molecule, one of the chlorine joins this free radical 
and will result in CH2Cl2 along with chlorine free radical being regenerated. So that's again your homogeneous catalyst. If you try to add these two reactions together, you will get this reaction because again chlorine and chlorine will be cancelled and these two radicals will be cancelled. You will be left with CH3Cl colliding with chlorine to produce these two. Now you can predict what is going to happen in the third step. In the third step, this becomes your first reactant because that is what happened. This product became your reactant over here. That is why this product will become your reactant over here. Now from here it gets a bit easy for you. Chlorine atom colliding with this molecule will take its hydrogen as it was doing in the first and the second step will result in HCl plus CH free radical Cl2 that is your intermediate and the reactant of your second step will result in CHCl3 plus chlorine free radical. Now this is the reactant of your last step. So I do not have much space so I am writing it over here. Imagine this to be CHCl3. This colliding with CHCl3 will form HCl and that will result in CCl3 free radical. That is your intermediate CCl3 collides with molecule will result in CCl4 and the catalyst that is your fourth step. So this is how you get your third step and this is how you get your last step. So till here we have explained how these four steps takes place. Shortly in the next video lecture number three I will be explaining the thing I just mentioned at the start of this video that these are not the only products possible there are more products possible to this reaction because we are only focusing on collisions between a molecule and a free radical and there are not only two free radicals there are many free radicals like CH2Cl, CHCl2 and lastly CCl3. Collisions between free radicals results in many new possibilities which I am going to explain in lecture number 3. Thank you.